מפרסם, the follower of Shri Aurobindo, the Indian guru from Pondicherry, which was recently published by Shimon Lev, and with his permission, I will show you the letter, uh, Berman writes, there are so many ways of spiritual development offered to men today. There is Rudolf Steiner, to whom I very much indebted. There is Uspensky, whom I do not know. There is René Guénon, whom I have studied this author. There is Shivananda, there is Krishnamurti, and there is Pondicherry. How can one who has had no personal experiences and who seeks his way decide for himself which way is the right one? This short passage revealed Bergman's deep interest in esotericism and alternative spirituality, as well as, as his uncertainties, uncertainties regarding his own spiritual quest. Bergman started his spiritual quest as a young man and continued searching for the rest of his life. He found much interest in many esoteric and spiritual teachings, although he did not become a devotee of any specific school. Bergman played a central role in introducing modern esoteric teachings to Israeli public in the formation of modern alternative spiritual movements in Israel. He published articles about modern spiritual teachings in Israeli newspapers and Hebrew scholarly journals and translated into Hebrew and published modern esoteric writings. He was a central figure in the network of Israeli esotericists and spiritual seekers and was involved in the formation of Israeli branches of esoteric movements. Today, I would like to offer a preliminary survey of Bellman's interest in esoteric and alternative spiritual teachings and his role in the formation of esoteric and alternative spiritual culture in Israel. Before beginning my talk, I would like to thank Shimon Lev and Sam Glauda Zimra, who are also engaged in the study of Bellman's esoteric and spiritual quests and who kindly shared with me the findings of their research. Bergman's interest in esotericism <coughs> started in Prague. <coughs> Bergman was introduced by Berta Fanta, his mother-in-law, to the Theosophical Society. I think we mentioned Berta Fanta's circle was mentioned a few times yesterday, but I think the fact that her circle was a Theosophical Circle was not mentioned. As we heard yesterday from Guy Paz, in 1910, um, in 1910, uh, Bergman met Rudolf Steiner, who was the president of the German section of the Theosophical Society at the time, and later founded the Anthroposophical Society. Bergman received spiritual exercises from Steiner, corresponded with him, and attended many of his lectures in the family. <coughs> Bergman continued, as we heard yesterday, to be interested in Steiner's teachings after his immigration to Palestine and remained an admirer of his for the rest of his life. He gave lectures and published articles about Steiner and was in close contact with the anthroposophical circles in Israel. Bergman assisted <coughs> in the publication of the Hebrew trans translation of Steiner's How to Know Higher Worlds, which was published in 1960. In his introduction to the book, Bergman related that Steiner had a great impact on his life and on his thought, and described him as one of the greatest teachers of humanity. However, Bergman expressed some criticism of Steiner, and especially of his followers, and he never joined the Anthroposophical Society. In the late 1940s, prior to his visit to India, Bergman became interested in the teachings of the Indian guru Sri Aurobindo and Mira Alfasa, the Jewish spiritual seeker who became Aurobindo's spiritual partner. 
and was, by the way, the member of the Cosmic Movement, which Shimon uh, 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 mentioned prior to a meeting before Robinho. Shimon Lev has studied Bergman's interest in Robinho's uh, integral yoga, and we will hear much more about it later today. Bergman first heard about Robindo and started reading his works in 1946. During his visit to India, Bergman met Indra Sen, the devotee of Aurobindo, with whom he became friendly on, and corresponded for many years. Bergman continued to study Aurobindo's writing, although he found them difficult as he was not familiar with Indian thought. When Aurobindo passed away in 1950, Bergman organized a commemoration event and published obituaries, obituaries in the journal India and Israel and in the newspaper Haaretz. In the English obituary, Bergman described Obindo as a great spiritual teacher and said that Shri Obindo's message about the arising of a new humanity touches the heart of Jewry brought up in an atmosphere of messianic hope. In my opinion, Bergman wrote, Shri Aurobindo's guiding principle is actually almost identical with Jewish messianic hope. Bergman continued to be interested in the teachings of Aurobindo and the mother in later years. And in 1959, he published an article about Aurobindo's teaching in the journal Mulat. In a diary entry from 1957, Bergman noted that there was nothing he couldn't accept in Aurobindo's field of philosophy, and that he didn't feel towards him <coughs> any of the resistance which he felt for other spiritual teachings, including Stein. However, he writes, he could not accept the divinity attributed to Aurobindo and the mother. In the late 1950s, Bergman became acquainted interested in the teachings of, of George Gurdjieff and Peter Ospensky. Bergman became acquainted with the works of Gurdjieff and Ospensky through Jean Sulzberger, a Jewish-American author, journalist, and spiritual seeker who was a student of Abraham Heschel and active in the Gurdjieff Foundation in New York. Bergman was not very much impressed with the writing of Gurdjieff, <clears throat> and found more interest in Uspensky's writings. In 1962, he published a Hebrew translation of Uspensky, and in 1963, he published an article about Gurdjieff and Uspensky's teachings. Bergman emphasized that he was not a disciple, he used the word Hasid, of Uspensky. However, he wrote, he sees importance in gaining inner knowledge of the mystical teachers of the past and especially of the present. Berman kept his interest in the teaching of Uspensky in the following years and was in touch with Josef Manela, a student of Joseph of Josef Schechtel and a member of the Yuval Circle and Kibbutz Yotfat who belonged to the first group of Gurdjieff's fourth way in Israel. Bergman was also interested in, interested in the traditional school of the French esotericist and Western Sufi René Guénon and his followers. As mentioned in the letter that he sent to Indersen in 1958, Bergman mentioned that he has started to study mm -hmm. René Guénon. In the same year, he published in Tarbitz an article on Guénon, the first and I think the only study of Guénon published in him. In the introduction to the article, Bergman notes that although Scholem's major trends has opened windows and enabled non-Jews to become acquainted with our mystical world, there was still no attempt to open bridges between Jewish mysticism and the mysticism of other nations. The purpose of the article, Bergman wrote, is to turn the attention of the scholar of Jewish mysticism to the contemporary mystical trend inspired by Genon. According to Bergman, Genon opened the way for a true scientific perception of the occult. However, he criticized Genon's radical rejection of modernity. 
also interested in the teaching of Genon's disciple, Friedhof Schuon. His interest and connection with Schuon were studied by Yosef Fenton in his article on the modern Jewish Sufis in Luzar. Bergman, who heard from, uh, about Schuon <coughs> from some of his acquaintances, including the above mentioned Jan Zulzberger and Adi Lam, a Jewish follower of Schuon from Argentina, had published a positive review of one of Schuon's books. The Transcendence, the Transcendence Unity of Religion in 1955. Bergman started corresponding with Schuon and visited him twice in his, re in his re in, in Schuon's residence in Lausanne during a trip to Europe in 1957, in which Bergman also visited several parapsychological institutes. Bergman related that initially Schuon's prophetic look and his pretentious manners made a bad impression on him. However, he found much interest in the conversations he had with, with him about Judaism, Islam, spiritualism, Zen, anthroposophy, and the, and the reality of miracles. Following their meeting in Lausanne, Bergman and Schwann continued to correspond for many years. Bergman was also interested in spiritualism and parapsychology, and he was one of the founders of the Israeli Parapsycho Par Parapsychological Society. And if you notice the membership card in the Israel Parapsychology Society, number one, and I'm grateful for Sam for this find in the archives of the, 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 in, the in the late 1950s, Bergman gave a series of lectures entitled Parapsychology, a new science, and as mentioned above, he visited several parapsychological institutes during his 1957 visit to Europe. In 1958, he founded, together with the dentist, Dr. Chaim Heinz Berdet, and the founder of the Israeli film industry, Margot Klausner, the Israeli Parapsychological Society, whose first meetings took place at his home. In 1965, Berman published an article about Shlomo Maimon and the beginning of scientific parapsychology, in which he describes the 18th century Jewish philosopher as a pioneer of scientific parapsychology. In 1967, Bergman was involved in the publication of Heim Berendt's Parapsychology, The World Beyond Our Five Senses, and wrote a short introduction to the book in which he applauded Bernet for his scientific approach. Interestingly, Bergman writes in the introduction that Israel provides a rich field for research of clairvoyance because many primitive clairvoyants can be found amongst the new immigrants to Israel. The duty of our generation, he wrote, is to investigate these remnants before they disappear. In 1968, Bergman published a review. That's the, 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 the In 1968, Bergman published a review article of our own cyclings, The Other Reality, which was published in, which was published the year before. Bergman praised the book but rejected Cyclin's assertion that parapsychology has a meta-scientific nature. Parapsychology, asserted Bergman, is a science, even if not a quantity, but rather a qualitative one. The role of parapsychology as an academic science is to provide methods and research instruments as well as a necessary critical approach. Bergman was interested in other spiritual teachers and schools, such as the teaching of Krishnamurti, of Krishnamurti and in Shivananda Yoga. He was acquainted with the spiritual teacher and healer Kolek Abulker Muscat from Algier, who immigrated to, to, uh, to Israel after the foundation of the state, uh, and, had, uh, and, had, and he took private guided imagery sessions with her. Bergman was also interested in Kabbalah, Hasidism, and in Jewish renewal movement, 
And later today, we will hear Sam Glauber Zimran's lecture about Bergman's connection with one of the founders of the Jewish renewal, American renewal movement, Zalman Shachter Shalom. Before turning to examine Bergman's role in the development of alternative spirituality in Israel, I would like to note that notwithstanding his great interest and openness to esoteric and spiritual teachings, Bergman was critical of some aspects of them and he did not become a member of any esoteric organization apart from the Israeli Parapsychological Society. Bergman adhered to a scientific critical stance, refused to accept the infallibility and divinity of a human teacher, and was critical of the blind admiration and worship of such teachers by the disciples. Thus, in his article on Gurdjieff and Uspensky, he, he emphasized that he was not a disciple of Uspensky, as he was not a disciple of Steiner, and said that there is nothing more repugnant than those stupid disciples who believe everything that comes out of their teacher's mouth and who are ready to annul their own thoughts and independence in front of their teacher. Although he shared Steiner, he, he, uh, although he regarded Steiner as one of the greatest teachers of humanity, he was critical of the fact that Steiner, in difference from Martin Buber, could never admit that he was wrong. As mentioned above, Bergman could not accept claims regarding Orobindo and the mother's divinity and was critical of Shuon's prophetic manner. The fact that the only movement that Bergman formally joined was the Israeli Parapsychological Society was because its goal, its stated goal, was to scientifically research parapsychological phenomena rather than to promote the belief in I would also like to emphasize the Jewish perspective of Bergman's interest in alternative spirituality. Although Bergman was interested in many non-Jewish spiritual circles, his interest in them was affected by his Jewish, pers by his Jewish perspective. Bergman discussed Shio Bindo's teaching from a Jewish perspective and criticized Steiner not only because he, he would not admit that he was wrong, but also because of his negative statements about Judaism. I would like to conclude with a short discussion of Bergman's impact and role in the development of Israeli spiritual culture. Bergman contribu contributed to the acquaintance of the Israeli public with esotericism and alternative, and alternative spiritualities through his lectures, articles, and translations, and through his involvement in the publication of Hebrew translations of esoteric writings. Indeed, many of the Israelis who became, involved, who became involved in alternative spirituality were first introduced to these teachings through Bergman's lectures and publications. Bergman played a central role in the early Israeli esoteric and alternative spiritual network. He corresponded with many of the Israeli esotericists and received them in his book. Many times the connections between different esotericists in Israel which stimulated the formation of Israeli esoteric groups and movements was made through him. Bergman's intellectual preeminence, <coughs> his, his seniority and authority in, the Isra in Israeli society, and his so social connections with leading intellectuals and politicians contributed much to the legitimacy of interest in alternative spirituality. However, his attempts to interest some of his intellectual friends, such as Google and Sholem, in esotericism and alternative spirituality were not very successful. Sholem and Google held a negative opinion of most of the movements which Bergman found interesting, interesting. And in one of his diary entries, Bergman mentioned how upset he was by the negative remark that Buber made against Steiner and his students. Bergman had more success with David Ben-Gurion, who, as Shimon Lev has shown, found much interest in the teachings of Shri of Orobindo, and with David Flussel, the Israeli scholar of early Christianity, who, by the way, also studied here in Charles University, who joined the Israeli Society for, for Parapsychology. 
Bergman's interest in alternative spirituality found resonance especially with younger Israeli students and spiritual seekers who attended his lectures, visited Bergman in his home, and shared with him the spiritual press. The great wave of interest in esotericism, alternative spirituality, new religious movements, and new age practices in Israel society started in the late 1960s and early 1970s during the last years of Bergman's life. The social context and the nature of Israeli later alternative spirituality is very different from that of Bergman and other less central figures of, Isra of early Israel esoteric and alternative spiritual media. However, Bergman's lectures, articles, and translations, the networks he created, and the encouragement he gave to young Israeli spiritual seekers contributed much to the emergence and social acceptance of alternative spiritualities in Israel society in the last decades of the 20th century and early decades of the 21st century. Thank you.